Hi everybody, and welcome to my Armoury Forger Community Server Beginner's Guide. Um, so in this video I'm going to talk about why you might want to uh, rent a Armoury Forger server. And then we're going to go into how you can then load custom mission scenarios onto that server. And how you can load mods onto that server as well. And what I've done on my GitHub, I've created... A readme which basically goes through with little code snippets showing you the bits that you need to change in your config files and there's also an example of a custom config as well so you can kind of look at that so let's have, let's have a look so this is my server um, and at the moment it's configured um, to play the sniper uh, sniper stories episode one scenario which is really a single player scenario but because it's on my server I can do some pretty cool things first thing is I can I can put mods on it so you can see here we've got the black hawk mog, mog mod and we've got the better vehicles mod with the jeep with the machine gun on top of it also we've got the tracers mod on and I think the more blood splatter effects mod as well but you could do that locally as well just playing single player however what's really important is this chap here now this chap is actually on my xbox so let's move him around a bit so the this guy here the, the, the kind of first person camera view you're seeing here is this is my pc logged into the server and this fella here let's turn around so he's looking at us this is my um xbox so what you can do with a community server is you can set it up to play sim um single player scenarios even like this but you can have more than one person log in so you can play co-op scenarios and you can play co-op scenarios with mods and not only that but you can also log in as admin and then ooh, if i press the right button you can then have access to the games master as well so what we could do is i can log in and i could spawn us in a different helicopter or a different vehicle um we can actually have a look to see what we're up against all the enemies we could spawn in extra enemies if we had the zombie mod installed we could in, we could have some zombies hanging around kind of doing a bit of a game master thing or we could even delete some of these enemies as well so we didn't have to uh, didn't have to fight quite so many of them um so it's a really powerful thing and a really fun thing to do and really easy as well because you may well have seen i did a post recently about how you can create you can host local in-game um, games as well but it's a little bit difficult you have to configure the firewalls on your router at home from your home pc so this is the main reason why you'd want to run i think a local oh sorry a community server from someone like nitrado because it now allows you to play co-op um or i guess it could be pvp scenarios with mods very very simply so you can go somewhere like um nitrado you know and then you could um you know choose how many slots i would always say go for the minimum slots to start off with um just to just to get everything going um and so what do you do next then so once you've bought the, the server that you want once you've rented it um what you need to do is you then go into the settings and what you want to change to start off with is the name so give it a name that will be easily found um, and then give it a, p a password uh, if you want to i mean pr you're probably going to want to play with friends so i've just got uh, a as my server password and i've got s as my admin password in this particular case you can kind of ignore whatever the scenario is because we're going to be changing that unless you want to play conquest um, or, or something like that now i tend to turn the fps down to 60 mainly because i always want my server to be crossplay because i want xbox to be able to play on it as well as pc so i tick crossplay and then i'm not messing around with the view distance or network distance you could make these longer but again you've got to remember with xbox especially you know we want to keep it nice and simple so the xbox can run nice and smooth now once you've done that and you've saved that and you've given it a different name the next file that we're interested in is the config file this one here so if we um click on that you'll see this is the one where i've i've changed it so if we scroll down a little bit you can see we've got scale speeder servers come up we've got password is a um, and then it should say down the bottom there is the admin password is s and what we can do is we can change the scenario id now the scenario id is the mission or the scenario that the um, server starts with so in this case as you can see it's starting with sniper valley um, and also if we scroll down what we've got here you can see we've got the different mods that we can in install 
and so what we've got here is we've got the sniper Snor stories one so when you install a uh, a different scenario there's not there's kind of two parts to it there's making the server start with the right uh, i guess it's config file.conf and also load the correct uh, the correct mod so those two things go together but then underneath it we've also got better vehicles the black hawk mod project Red redline core which is what the black hawk relies on then we've got bloodlust 2 for better blood splatters night vision as well and better traces because remember as well in our game here what i could do if i wanted to i could go into game master uh, i could go into scenario properties and i could change this to a nighttime mission for example like that um, which would mean that we would have to then use our uh, night vision goggles that the, the modded night vision goggles that are in a armor box which is which is there so you know it's another thing that, that you can do and we've got better tracers as well so you can see the bullets better at night so now you're saying okay Rob well how do I know how to do all this so what I've done is over on my github and there'll be a link to this in the description below the video I've kind of put together some examples so go over there and when, when you go to the github if you just click on code download zip we can download the two files we can just look at them the config example.json is is the file that you see here so is this file so if you open it up into your favorite text editor say something like notepad plus plus you can look through and you can see the format that the the file should be in so if you get a little bit lost and you think oh, i'm not really sure where stuff could, should go and um, you know that that tells you um uh, this is the readme here so it's all downloaded and it's kind of a step-by-step -step in instruction so in these examples here what i give you are the preset scenario ids and the preset mod ids for eden sniper stories one two three and four because these are really cool little single player scenarios that work well as multiplayer as well and they're nice and simple they don't re 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 they don't re uh, rely on other mods either and there's as i say there's two parts so there's the scenario id which is that value there and then there's the mod id which is that value there so in your config file you're going to be changing the scenario id to the one from the readme and you're going to be changing the mod id there and also the mod name there and you're probably going to change the game mode there the game mode is just the text box that you know when you're in the browser it says you know sniper valley episode one or sniper valley episode two or mystery mission you could have you could have something like that so if you just go through that readme it tells you you know how to do that for sniper um, mission one two three and four and then also what i've included is mods as well so if we scroll down you'll see i've got this example here of mods now what you do with these is once you've copy and pasted the mod id for the scenario into the mod section you can just copy and paste these underneath that so you end up with something that looks like this so in sniper uh, sniper story so you can see in the mod section we've got sniper stories one and then underneath that we've got better vehicles black court project redline core bloodlust 2 night vision and you can see the last one there's no comma after it um, and that means the server will then load up with these mods now one thing that is incredibly important is don't put too many mods on your server because even on pc downloading mods can be a little bit janky um, and large mods for example like the black hawk black hawk helicopter mod sometimes they can take ages to download i don't think the bohemian interactive servers that have these mods on them are particularly good or maybe they get busy but this is especially true for xbox and on xbox if you're in a situation where you need to have uh, several different mods for a server and then you go to join that server what happens is that the xbox tries to download them all at once and it just crashes it just can't do it and i would suggest that if you've got some friends on xbox that are coming to your server you know tell them the mods they need to download and get them to download them one at a time in the workshop before they go into it they will still have problems in the future though that when they go to join a server if the, if a mod hasn't updated that might want to update itself and that can be a bit of a nightmare so if you don't really need the black hawk mod um, and therefore the project redline core mod don't have it on the server take it off and, and then put it back on when you really need it try and stick to the lightweight mods so that the xbox players can get on there as well now what i've also done 
in these instructions is I've shown you uh, I, how to get the um, scenario IDs and the mod IDs as well. So in essence, if you want to uh, put a, a custom scenario ID, you need to know what the uh, what the mission ID uh, is as well, um, because they're different. Now let me show you how to do it as well while we're here. So what you can do is if you um, if you subscribe to a mod uh, in in game. Um, it will then download to your local PC. So I tell you what, let's let's go back into Armour Forge and let's come out of here. Let's exit to main menu. Okay, so if we come out of here, and so if we go to, for example, go to the workshop, and then we go to let's have a look for sniper. Okay, so let's say I hadn't. say I hadn't downloaded Sniper Stories Episode 2 and I wanted to put this on my server what would you do, you would do, you would download that um, you would you know, click on download, it download to your local PC and then you need to find it on your computer um, and the way you do it is you go somewhere, it would be some, somewhere like C users uh, username, documents, my games, armor Forger, then add-ons and you'll see all of these folders. Now these are all the folders for the mods, but they're all numbers. So you're like, well, which one is it in? Now the way that you know which one it is it's in is if you go to the online reforger workshop and we look for Sniper Stories Episode 2, and then we get this ID here and we copy that. Then we go back to our add-ons. And then if we just search for that folder and we go in, so that's the folder. If we go into that folder, you see a file called serverdata.json. If we edit that with Mo, uh, Notepad, you'll see we've got now got the game ID. So that's the bit we need. And you would copy that, and that then goes into where are we? That then goes into if we go to the top, goes into the scenario ID right there, and you paste it there. But you must remember as well that the uh, oops, that the mod ID here, this mod ID, you would still need that mod on the server. So in the mod section, that was there where you would put the mod ID in and you would put the different name. So the, the name, um, you can put anything in there. Obviously I've put sniper story, so it, it kind of matches up with the scenario. And the version, if you leave the version blank, that just means it will always use the latest version. Um, which kind of makes sense, doesn't it, I guess. Unless you had maybe had someone who said, oh, I can't download the latest one. We need to roll it back, but I would always go with the, the latest versions. Also, be very aware of the problem whereby you may have, might have situations where um, uh, mods become incompatible and stop working. I think at the moment, I mean, I could be wrong that the Where Am I mod isn't working, and that's why I haven't included this one in uh, the Where Am I in this particular selection of mods, um, because it was really a case of um, if it doesn't work, um, I didn't want to include it. So, so there we go. So hopefully that gives you some ideas and some help. Um, and as I say, go through the readme. Just read through the readme. And if you do get you know, a little bit lost, look at that example config file. And that will help you then um, uh, really see where things are meant to go. And although it might seem a little bit complicated now, once you've done it once and you've put a custom scenario with some mods on your server and you've logged in and you've logged into Game Master, um, and then you've changed it to a different scenario. It really is pretty easy. It doesn't take very long at all. And also, actually, one thing I will add at the end is, if um, you come to the end of your um, uh, session and you complete the mission, um, so for example, in this case, we, we complete Sniper Valley. Um, what you need to do with most, in most cases, is excuse me, you need to restart your server in order for those for the for the mission to to reset. Uh, do I use the wrong password? Hey, right. see if we can get in again. Bup, 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 bup. Here we go. Sniper Valley episode one. All makes sense. And remember, I'm recording this video at the end of January in 2023. Armor Forge is going to go through some big changes in 2023. Um, I think we're going to see lots of different things happening. Um, and so th we're going to have more control over what happens on the servers um, and probably things like oh it's gone a bit dark probably, <laughs> probably things like um, 
uh, the, the kind of different missions we can have will change as as they go on. At least we can see the stars. Um, and I will do updated videos um, to, to sort of come across that as well. So there we go. Hopefully this has helped. If it has, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. Um, let's come in here. Let's set the time and day to daytime. That's better. We can actually see what we're doing now, can't we? And have lots of fun in Armour of Forger. And if you've kind of been away from Armour of Forger on Xbox and PC, um, because of its poor state at launch, it's much, much better now. The frame rates are definitely higher. It's looking good. It's looking smoother. The only thing I say you've got to watch out for, especially on Xbox, is don't load the game up with too many mods. Otherwise, you'll have a right nightmare when it comes to updating them and joining servers. Okay, thank you very much, and I'll see you again soon.